I film a lot of interviews, and it's something I did not expect that I was going to be doing when I first got interested as a filmmaker, but it's actually something I'm doing really frequently and a skill set that I've really learned how to master, or at least I'm trying to learn how to master it every single day. So in this video, I thought I would go over my process, and just as a disclaimer, this is my process. Everyone has their own way about making videos, and everyone has their own ways of really being able to interact with their clients or interact with uh, the interviewee. Some people are really gifted at this, and they just know how to converse with someone else, and they are really great at being able to get answers and get these amazing results for their film or for their project. Other people are really bad at it. I'm sitting somewhere in between. Because I'm juggling around so many other jobs and I have so many other things that are um, really taking my focus, it can be a little challenging to actually engage with the person and have a natural conversation with them. At the same time though, I am someone who I think reacts very naturally to someone else. And I think I do listen really nicely to other people's answers. So I think I'm able to get really nice responses from others. At least I'm really happy with the results I get when I get back home and I start editing the project. But that might not be your case and that might not be your scenario. So in today's video, I really wanna focus on the preparation of filming an interview. How do you go about figuring out the questions to ask and how do you go about being prepared and how do you actually uh, take control when there are so many other things that are needing to be your priority. And there are so many other things that you have to juggle while you're on set, especially if you don't really have a big crew. It can be a little intimidating, but hopefully if you stick with me throughout the rest of the video, you'll be a little bit more prepared and at least you'll have a little bit of an idea at my process. So if that sounds really good, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing you want to do if you're trying to film an interview or really if you're wanting to do any sort of video project, you need to actually communicate what your vision is. And when I say communicate your vision, it's not just figuring out what your final video and final product is going to be, though that's part of it. You really need to communicate and explain to other people what your vision is for this project because if you can do that then you know you have a really solid project on your hands you know what kind of results you're aiming for and you know how to get those results once you figure out this stage you can really master anything that follows if you can communicate your vision properly to other people then you know your vision is solid then you know you have a really tangible idea a really tangible project on your hands this should be done with every project, regardless of whether it's an interview or a documentary, or if it's going to be a wedding. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit confusing for you and everyone you're working with. Now let's talk about preparation. What kind of things do you need to prepare for? Do you really go in depth and figure out every single question, every single aspect and think ahead? Some people like to do that. I know plenty of directors that do that. Um, in depth, they have notebooks that are really thick and they just have all kinds of sticky notes and pages and really go in depth with what their vision is. Other people um, draw their notes on a napkin. There's no real right or wrong way about going about doing this. It's really up to you. It's a very personal process. For myself, I'm somewhere in between these two, again. I have a notebook here that even right now I have a couple bullet points. Sometimes I go really in depth and I have all these notes and I have all these directions and this can go on for multiple pages long. I find that I really have to write down some basic questions and have a preparation, have some kind of a shot list or some sort of thing I can fall back on because if I'm really tired that day, if I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before, or if I've got some family emergency or we're really short on time, at least I can fall back on this plan and I can at least get something rather than nothing. One time my back pain was so bad that I had to go lay down. I couldn't actually be on set for my own project and I had to hand off um, my notebook over to my assistant director and they went ahead and they asked the questions and they were able to fill in the gaps because I communicated what my vision was and I had some very basic bullet point notes and some very basic preparation that they could at least fall back on. This is a very extreme example, but it happens. And there are also plenty of examples where you go on set and your mind just goes blank. You have no idea what you're going to say and you have no idea what you are going to do because when you're not well prepared, sometimes you are all frazzled in your own brain. At least I get that way sometimes. And then I'm on set and I'm just not really able to ask good questions. I'm stuck there going, um, do you like weather? Like not any specific weather, like just the concept of weather. Do you, do you like weather? Now, even if you had a vision, even if you had a specific idea, you really don't want to pry an answer out of them because that can make them feel a little bit defensive and that can really 
um, make it a little bit difficult for you to carry on an interview and have a natural conversation, especially if they take you by surprise and they just say, no, I don't feel that way, when you expected them to say yes, and you're just shocked because that was the direction you were expecting to go. You wanna be a little bit flexible with your plan, you wanna be a little bit flexible with your vision, but also you don't want them to feel like you're trying to get a specific answer from them, even if you maybe are, you don't want them to feel that way. If they have a specific opinion or if their minds have changed in the past 10 years and you're stuck with an idea that they had several years ago, don't cram in on that and don't make them feel guilty or awkward because their minds have changed and their opinions are different than you expected them to be. Let them be open, let them be honest with you and really be as natural as you possibly can be and have a conversation with them. Don't make them feel awkward, don't make them feel all claustrophobic because there are lights, there are cameras, there are microphones and there's people all looking at them. If they didn't answer a question the way you expected them to or they just didn't give you the right answer that you were hoping that they would give you, you can double back to that question later on. But try not to keep on crying and closing in and asking them again and asking them again because that can get really annoying for them. That can make them feel a little bit uncomfortable, which is the very opposite of what we're trying to do. So don't pry answers out of them. Let them speak naturally. Let them come to that conclusion on their own and say the answers that they want to say, not the answers that you want them to say. And don't be afraid to go off the rails and try asking them a different question. If something pops in your mind or you have an idea all of a sudden, take it in that direction. You can always go back to your plan later on, but if you have a burst of inspiration, go for it. Let's see where that takes you. If it doesn't take you anywhere, no big deal. You have that plan, you have that backup. But if it takes you somewhere amazing and you get this unique story that no one else thought of because you just thought of it at the spur of the moment, that can be really special, that can be really great, and something you can't really replicate or expect to happen. So when you get that burst of inspiration, try that moment out. Go a little bit freestyle, go a little bit off of the plan if that's the direction that you suddenly feel like you need to go. Anyway guys, those are just some of my tips, some of my suggestions for preparing and filming an interview. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other suggestions. I'm really excited to actually go behind the scenes and show you all about this documentary that I'm filming. And let me know in the comments down below if you have any other suggestions or any other recommendations for how you would go about filming an interview. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, ring that notification bell so you're getting those notifications. You know, do all that jazz and I will see you next time. Take care.